Let's take a holistic look at the CloudBees platform and how all of its components come together. I'm going to walk you through a day in the life of a new feature, starting from being written all the way out into running in production. So here's my application. This is the dashboard where users can log in and they can see details about their account. Now my team and I are working on a new feature where users can directly schedule an appointment with their doctor. The majority of the work has already been done. We've already added the functionality in our backend services. All I need to work on now is adding the scheduling button so our users can actually use this new functionality. So let's start by jumping right into the code. The way that my team operates is that all of our new features will be behind feature flags. I don't know if this new functionality is going to be any good, so I'll progressively roll this out to some portion of our users to start with, and then I'll scale it up from there. To begin with, I need to add a new feature flag. I'm going to call it Appointment Button. This will allow me to turn this feature on and off for our users. Now I'm going to head over to the dashboard where I've got the View Profile button, and now I just need to add the Schedule Appointment button. I've added this button, and I've put it behind this feature flag. You can see that it's a simple conditional where if the flag is enabled, then I'll render the Schedule Appointment button. It really is as simple as that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a pull request. Though first, I need to make a commit. I've added my commit, and now I need to create a pull request. And with that, I've created a pull request. So if I jump into GitHub, I can now see that I have this pull request ready to go. And some jobs are being kicked off automatically. CloudBees CI, one of the components of our platform, is automatically detecting this pull request and has started some work. In this case, it's testing the code, and it's going to build me an image that I can use. The great thing is, I don't have to jump into CloudBees CI directly. I can let that all operate behind the scenes. As a developer, I can look in and see the results directly in GitHub. If it failed, I can get the details here. Or, if it passed, I can just be satisfied with the green check. If I wanted to, I could click into this and navigate over to CloudBees CI. But I really don't have to because all the information I need is being surfaced directly in here. Now, all of my checks have successfully passed. One additional thing is, I have a preview environment automatically spun up for me. I can go in here and validate that this new feature is exactly what I want. I can see by the passing test that functionally, it should be fine, but maybe it doesn't visually look the way that I want. So let me go ahead and take a look. I've now got my preview environment. What I can do is go to the developer override widget, where I can select the appointment button flag and set it to be true. Now I can see the new schedule appointment button. And to me, that looks good. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'll go ahead and get back to GitHub and merge the pull request. And one thing I'll see is that the preview environment will automatically spin down, so I'm not wasting any resources. Now that this functionality is pushed into my main branch, it's going to go ahead and build the official image, and it'll kick off a release. Once that completed, my new release candidate started. So the release is a way for us to map the full end-to-end -end process of writing code and moving it all the way into production. You can think about it as a value stream map, except instead of being view only, it's actually orchestrating the work. So I've committed the code, I have my CI job, which you can see the logs for directly in here, as well as the code commit details. And then I have all the different steps along the way that bring the new code into production. This includes integrations with other tools where I'm going to have it perform operations like pulling statuses, kicking off scans, and just generally pulling information. I can then use the data later on in the process to make decisions. By virtue of formalizing my software delivery process, I have a consistent and reliable way to deliver my software whenever I add new features. And it includes things like approvals, where I can have automated validation steps that are derived by the data that comes out of other steps. And I have manual ones, where a user can come in here and validate and give details. I have four different stages in this release, three of which correspond to different environments, QA, pre-prod, and prod. In each of the environment stages, it will perform a deployment into a new environment. And then importantly, because I've got this new feature, the corresponding flag needs to be enabled in each environment. You'll see that the production stage is a little bit different than the rest. In this case, I have it doing a progressive rollout where only a portion of the users will see the new functionality. If it turns out to not be successful, I'll just turn it off. If it is successful, I'll roll it out to everyone. One important consideration for software delivery is how do you keep track of what's going on? Well, you need a good audit trail. You want to understand why everything that has happened has happened. One of the things we do out of the box is provide an audit report. This provides you with all the information about the approvals, time durations of each task, evidence reports, as well as the deployments and build details. If you have auditors, you can easily provide them with this information either with direct access or exporting it as a PDF. Back to the release, now I'm running in production and I've enabled the feature for some percentage of users. If I jump over to the feature management dashboard, I can see this new appointment button is enabled for 50% of the traffic. If I wanted, I could add additional criteria such as if someone's a beta user or not. In this case, it's just a simple 50-50 split. Now I can determine if I want this to move forward based on subjective feedback from users, 
Or I could use something more objective, like using analytic data to see usage rates. In this case, I'm going to use server metrics to keep track of the number of server errors that are thrown. Now, I'm going to jump over to Grafana and take a look at my metrics. And it's not looking great. Looks like this new feature resulted in a bunch of new 500 errors. So before too many users experience this issue, I'm going to turn off the feature. All I need to do is come back to the feature management dashboard and hit the kill switch. Now it's completely turned off for everyone. Now my team can go back and do some debugging and figure out why this is throwing errors. Instead of having to do a full rollback, I was able to instantly turn off this broken feature for everyone. And I can automate this using the API by making a request whenever a particular alerting event occurs. While the release process has been going on, the platform has been gathering information about the whole software delivery process. It comes with several out-of-the-box dashboards, such as this release dashboard, where I can see aggregate information across all of my releases. If, for instance, my organization has an objective to decrease our release cadence from monthly to weekly, I can keep track of how we're moving towards this goal. This also presents information on the top bottlenecks, which I can tackle as I'm trying to speed up these releases. These dashboards are fully customizable using the simple editor. Anyone can come in here and modify it to fit their needs. When you think about the idea of value stream management, you're wanting to understand holistically what is going on across your whole software delivery process. Every organization operates differently, and as a result, their needs will differ. By default, we have dashboards to show off deployments, releases, CI build servers, door metrics, and more. But you can also create dashboards that are completely custom and pull information from a remote tool like Jira. In this case, I can see information on how the developers are spending their time based on issue types. How much time is spent on new feature development versus maintenance? Do we have any current security violations? Everything I've touched on so far has been through the lens of a single team working on a new feature. There are many tools out there that can help achieve something similar for a few teams. However, when it comes to scaling it up to hundreds or thousands of people, including engineers, release managers, shared service members, leaders, and more, it becomes a totally different story. All of these people have some level of responsibility in software delivery. And this is where many tools fall short, yet CloudBees shines. We're laser focused on the needs of large enterprises, so we can enable them to scale their software delivery platform as quickly as they grow. Now, if your interests are piqued, come check us out at cloudbees.com. We'd love to work together to solve your software delivery challenges.